Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with another recurring episode segment for us where we talk about the bottles that we finished recently and whether we would actually spend our money on buying them again or not. Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Like we said at the top, this is a recurring episode for us, but we hope it's helpful for you as viewers because ultimately the most important thing we talk about on this channel, in our opinion, is whether we would actually spend our money on rebuying bottles. Really easy to buy a bottle the first time, but voting with your dollars is the ultimate the ultimate endorsement yeah. of a product. Or non-endorsement. Exactly. But before we get into that, we gotta get into the first sip. Yeah. You guys know how we do it around here. Something we've never tried before, so there's no famili familiarity but we've also chosen this at random from a single sample pool. So we don't even know what's in our glass, Correct. much less what it's supposed to taste like. That's how you get our most honest opinions without any bias. Let's get into it on the nose. So I'm getting some pretty typical bourbon smells from this. It smells good though. It's it's nothing like, nothing's hitting me out of the blue. Like as far as nothing's too one way or the other. I'm not getting stinky feet or anything. I'm just getting typical bourbon smells of goodness. This smells fantastic. Yeah. Like, and I, I'm not using that hyper hyperbolically. I, that's not hyperbole. It's this, I'm not saying this smells the most amazing thing in the world. This smells like really classic bourbon. Everything's in nice balance. Yeah. Your caramels, your vanillas, your oaks, a little bit of apple in there. It is, smells so pleasant and so inviting. Yeah. And I just want to drink it and I'm going to shut up and we're going to take a sip Let's now. drink Let's it. Let's go. <laughs> It tastes like I expected it to. As <laughs> Are you having a praise moment? Yeah. I, uh, this is good. I like this. There's a little bit of pencil eraser for me. I see and that, yeah. What is that? When I taste pencil eraser, what is that? I think it's the barrel char, but I I don't get the eraser. I, you know what? I guess I can. It's ever so slightly. I can get, you could tell me pencil shavings and I can get that. Just the number two pencil in a glass, liquefied somehow. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more than that there. You kind of, you tend to gravitate towards those notes that stand out to you. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we try to do here. We really yeah. try to speak to the foremost notes, the notes that are at the forefront, mm -hmm. the foremost notes. Is that right? Nonetheless, sure. you know what I'm saying? The stuff that really stands out for me, this is really classic bourbon sweetness. Mm -hmm. Just coming right to the forefront is really enjoyable. It's a little warm, surprisingly. I yep. took a second sip and I felt a little bit of heat. So this may, I'm just guessing, have a little bit of higher proof than I thought it did originally, maybe like in the 110s, 110s proof point, because that's what it feels like in my throat. Yeah, I think it does have some proof. It's I'm getting a little bit of barrel char and oak funk on the back end on that second sip. Oak's coming more toward the forefront, which is really typical for me. First sip, I tend to get more of the fruity sweetness mm -hmm. or the sweet elements. The second sip, I get a little bit more of the barrel. And that's absolutely happening right now. This is making my mouth water. It's got a nice oily viscosity to it. Do you want another sip? I really enjoy this. We are gonna rate this thing on nose, flavor, and experience. Mm -hmm. And for us, the experience is kind of like the mouthfeel, the finish, all that stuff, not necessarily just the nose and the flavor, kind of the more intangibles. Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about more of the real, real world stuff. You think we would be better at that a year into this channel, but we're not. That's what you get for tuning in. So <laughs> one more sip and then we'll get some ratings on this glass. Man, that's just like an ice cream sundae with like cherry syrup drizzled all over it. That's I'm not getting that, but I can see how you would love this. Like okay. this is good. Yeah. It's just like for me, I just think classic bourbon. Yeah. I'm not getting any nothing is standing out. I'm just thinking classic bourbon. Yeah. This but is Okay, let's get into it. Okay. Nose, flavor, and experience, where are you at? For me, it gets thumbs up across the board. Good nose, good flavor, good experience. Again, classic, <laughs> like a classic experience. Yeah. Bourbon classic. Buckle up, buttercup. Oh, this you're one, gonna do two thumbs up, aren't you? I'm gonna do two thumbs up across the board. Nose, flavor, and experience. I'm not, okay. again, that doesn't mean it's the best pour in the world. I, that's not what two thumbs up across the board means. It just means that I love it. Mm. It's super enjoyable. It's everything I want for what it is, which seems to be like a, what I would call a medium proof point. The flavors, the nose, the experience, they all come together to create a really 
enjoyable overall You're pour. not disappointed. I'm not disappointed in the least. Yeah. I feel like there's no way this is available. It just, you can't be this good and be something that just sits well, on shelves that people pass over. Let's find out. Let's find out. And then we'll talk about some of our real world metrics here. So this is. It's a rye? What? Wow. I would never have guessed it's a rye. It is 114 proof and it's old over. What is that? Overholt. Overholt. This is not. What? It's not. Is this a non chill filter? Okay. So. We got to do two shout outs real quick. It's non-chill filtered, four-year-old rye. We have to give a shout out to Eric David Gunderson, our mm. friend for giving us a sample of this. And we have to give a shout out to Phil and Julie from the Bourbon Van. They love this stuff. And you love this stuff. And I love this stuff. For like, it is, and I like this stuff. It's good. Yeah. It's I see now like the barrel char I was getting, some of the nuttiness that people talk about with Jim Beam. I would not have pegged this as a rye. Man, there's this there is, is so like good. some heat there, and maybe I was just thinking that was proof. Mm -hmm. Could that be right? It could be, yeah. And it's not low; it's 114, it's 114 proof. proof. I thought it okay. was like 110, 110s. Here's the thing. So I said it was medium proof, and we're right on with that. It didn't seem like, like I said, it wasn't special. Don't think this is the best pour in the world, but for what it is, it's something special. This is from Jim Beam. Don't think it's special, but for what it is, it's something special. Yeah. That's literally for, what for, you just said. For what it is. But this is 114 proof. Everybody talks about old granddad 114 being this amazing value buy. Uh -huh. Like that people just rave and Fred Minnick put it as a number one budget value available bourbon. Okay. How much does it cost usually? 30 bucks. Okay. This is not, this is from Jim Beam, but this is their rye. I'm a bourbon drinker. I don't tend to like rye. Mm -hmm. I like this so much more than Old Granddad. I would never buy Old Granddad again. I've had a few wow. bottles. Is this available? Yeah. There's always like What's this funky sour note. Oh, I actually need to look it up. Where's my phone? Is this something Let's we can put in our double blind sample pool against? Oh, we have uh, to. Old Granddad? Yeah, we have to. Old Overholt. Standby. Yeah. What's the price? No, that's not right. That's, not that's right. the that's the inexpensive one. You need four year non chill filter. This is $30? Yeah. What? We, just, we just looked it up. Dude, okay. We're going to put this in our double blind sample pool against Old Granddad 114. We're out of Old Granddad 114, but I will buy another bottle just to put into a head to head. And we're going to do a head to head, a, bl a blind head to head. So it may not be coming up for like a year from now, but we're going to put it in our sample pool and we'll see what happens. Both 114 proof, both from Jim Beam. This knocked my socks off for like an inexpensive medium proof point pour. Mm -hmm. Old Granddad comes across to me like sour and funky peanut shell kind of just grossness on the back mm -hmm. end. And I said we'd never buy another bottle, but now we're going to because of this pour. Wow. I am so impressed with this. Yeah. This is, I like rye. <laughs> Who would have thunk it? He's a rye yeah. guy. So wait, we got to get into our, okay. So our retail and consumer metrics and uh -huh. our real world yep. conversation. Yep. So retail is the $30. price and the availability it's 30 bucks i don't know how available it is because i've honestly never even paid attention to this product okay the only reason we have this sample in our pool is because of eric it was giving given us to us sample. yeah because he thought we would like it particularly you turns out i'm in love with it and i do like it let's get that straight i like it yeah you love it i Dude, like it for the money and I'm this feeling, is unreal i'm feeling a little tough today as far as like my my judging goes like i it yeah. has something has to like really blow my socks off. Yeah, I'm walking on eggshells, guys. It's it's tense over here. I don't know if you can feel it through the camera, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where are you at? Retail score, 30 bucks. Call it pretty readily available. If it's pretty readily available, um, I'm going to give it two thumbs up on retail score. $30 is good price. It's yeah. below my threshold, so good price. If it is readily available, it gets two thumbs up. If it's not readily available, it's just going to get one, but we'll just pretend it is. Yeah. Two. And then would you buy it for 30 bucks? Yeah, I would. I, I it's, I'm going to give it just a thumbs up. Yeah. I'm not like, I don't have to have it, but I would buy it for $30 for the price. Yeah. yeah. For me, for the retail part of the equation, price and availability, two thumbs up, that proof, that price, that, you know, being somewhat readily available for the most part, that's going to get it two thumbs up. Would I buy it again or not? Thumbs up. Absolutely. I'm not stocking up on these. I'm not going out of my way. I want to be real clear. It's not the best whiskey ever. I'm trying to be more loose with my thumbs. And if I really love something for what it is, it deserves to get a really good score. It's kind of ridiculous to rate things 
like based on the standard of the absolute best thing I've ever had when it's a $30 bottle. But this is one I, of the most remarkable $30 bottles I have tried in recent memory. I would say that it is $30. It's a good value. Based on the proof, I would have said that I would have paid 60 bucks for this. Yeah, I would say like 40 to 50 yeah. for me. I'm really impressed with this pour. Wow, okay. If you're really impressed with the channel and the way we do things around here, probably see a professional and figure out what's Seek wrong. professional but, help. <laughs> but if you really are, then you can check the video description below for a link to our Patreon community. And over there, what you will do is you will find a lot of things that we do that are a ton of fun that we, it's like our interactive element yeah. is what we say. So we have two additional videos every week that are uncut, unscripted. Uncut, unfiltered. Uncut, unfiltered, yeah. And we also do blind flight nights, sample shares, giveaways with our patron community. You can get plugged into our online Discord server, all kinds of stuff. Check it out down there. And if you like Josh's shirt as much as Josh likes that rye, go ahead and check out stuffandwhiskey.com. Yeah, check us out over there. We've got hats, tumblers, all kinds you of stuff. You can find that shirt and all kinds of other stuff too. Absolutely. Let's get into our main topic today. Oh yeah, we haven't even gotten into that yet. I got so enamored with this rye oh as my. like a good budget option. Okay, so all right. what is our buy-buy or rebuy? Oh, that's Tell the even, people. I don't even know. It's your idea. Oh, what what the episode is about? Yes. Oh yeah, it's where we just show you on a semi-regular basis bottles that we finish yep. and if we will use our money to go buy them again or if they're like not worth the money to us. Yeah. And we're frugal bordering on tightwad over here. So hey, if we can. You'll thank me later, dude. And if we can endorse a bottle by saying that we're going to spend our own money to rebuy it, that is a ringing endorsement. Mm -hmm. So with that said, let's get into it. We have three categories. We're not buying it ever again once we in this video are have already gone against because we said old granddad 114 we're never buying again but if it were for us we wouldn't right now we're gonna buy a bottle for the channel we have our we'll maybe rebuy it again maybe 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 but but maybe not and our absolute definite will we rebuys will. Mm -hmm. so we start off with the bad and work our way towards the good okay. and let's go ahead and make some people mad right off the bat not gonna buy it again george t stag Ooh. pregnant pause Okay, we got this bottle in a raffle lottery situation at a local store for $109.99. Slight markup on retail of $99.99. The likelihood that we will ever find this again is so slim. And if we do find it, it's probably going to be marked up to $1,000 or more. That's insane. And that's why it's in our won't rebuy category because we literally can't rebuy it. Now, do we like it? Yes. Do I like it? Yeah. Okay. Do we love it? We've put it in blind head to heads. It's been on the channel several times. It's been against Stag Jr. It's get, it's went against Rare Breed. It's went against Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Single Barrels. Is it anything special? Does it warrant a thousand dollar price tag for price gouging stores or secondary values? Honestly, if I try this by itself, I'm enamored with it. If I try it in a double blind scenario where I don't know that it's in one of the glasses, it honestly comes across due to the age. It comes across a little bit more bitter than I prefer, mm. a little bit more like dark chocolatey bitter. I'm more of a milk chocolate guy or a very low percentage and dark chocolate guy. I do like dark chocolate, yeah. but it's still not blowing me away. Yeah, 70% dark chocolate is about as much as I'm willing to go. This is more like 85%. Mm. It's it's a little bitter. It's a little dry on the back end. And it's really good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downing it. It's just we're probably not going to ever see this again. And we're not going to pay a price gouge markup for it. We're not going to pay a premium for it. Because now we've owned a bottle. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about owning that bottle was being able to share it with friends. That's 100% the yep. best thing. The taste in and of itself, it's just barrel proof well-aged whiskey from a major distiller. There's a lot of those out there, maybe not 15 years, but Buffalo Trace is not putting unicorn tears in their whiskey. It's just whiskey. Let's all settle down a little bit. <laughs> With that said, let's move on to our second bottle here okay. that we will not rebuy, and it's gonna be Pikesville Rye. I would buy this old Overholt Rye before I buy this Pikesville yeah. Rye. This stuff is good. This stuff is good. Don't get us wrong. But for $50, 110 proof, what would fifty dollars and hundred hundred and ten ish proof? What are you buying instead? New Riff or Rare Breed or Stellum 
Or sell them, ooh yeah. And I'm buying all three of those over this as well. We might buy another ch bottle for the channel, but I don't see a need to buy this again. Personally, we would not buy it. Yeah. Funny enough, for a bourbon drinker in in blinds, this has came across like a bourbon, like a high rye bourbon that is proofy, but fairly simplistic. It's kind of sweet and spicy, and there's not as much complexity there so, as I would want for 50 so bucks. So if you are a bourbon drinker who is dabbling in the world of rye, this would be a good one to, to get at one point, but you may not continue to buy it after you've kind of worked your way through it. Yeah, and maybe and you buy on. some other stuff, yeah. you compare it to. Yeah. All right, let's get into our maybe we'll rebuys, but maybe we won't. Okay. First up is going to be Bardstown Bourbon Company's Discovery Series. And this hurts my heart. It does. But we got to be real on the channel. Yeah. Okay. We love Bardstown. For we, my birthday back in 2021, we went you took me to Bardstown. Bardstown. Mm -hmm. We went to the honey thieving barrel experience. It was great. Three and four, two, three, and four, we loved from the Discovery series. Five, we actually liked more than most people, but we actually ultimately, with our own money dollars, chose to pass on that product. Mm -hmm. We did buy six and we do like it quite a bit. We've tried seven. And you actually have an adamant dislike. I did not for like seven. it. I did not like it at all. The corn whiskey in there made it a little too uh, sweet for you, yeah. like overly cloyingly sweet. For me, it's still good, but man, the price tag creeping up in our market to like 140, 150. It's and that's retail. That's so much that's money. That's retail. That's so much lot. money, and that's why the product, the product change that's happening with the blends and the price tag being so high. Before we started doing blind tastings, I was more willing to spend more money on this product. Now that we've done so many blind tastings over the course of just personal life in this channel, yeah. um, it's really hard to justify the money for Bardstown Discovery Company. Yeah. Some people get on us a little bit about not saying alternatives. Right now, Sam Houston and Calumet, their 14 and 15 year products, I am finding are to be a better plus $100 special occasion bottle buy over the discovery series okay. and that wasn't the case when we were in the discovery series two three and four let's move on to our next bottle this is the maybe buy again we're gonna make some people mad just like george t stag this is gonna be elijah craig barrel proof and this particular bottle that we just finished is a121 mm -hmm. now we've tried a122 mm -hmm. and it's i liked it you didn't really like it you actually liked A121 more than I did. The 2021 batches were kind of widely received as not being as good. It seems like they might be getting back on track. Problem with this product for us is that it's creeping up in price. We got A121 for $70. We got C921 for $80. And then A122 got marked up to $90 in our market. It's just going up and up and up. They're becoming increasingly harder to find. It's becoming more of a headache. And I'm going to be totally honest. A lot of these single barrels are starting to hit in the eight to 10 year range. And I personally, if I'm going to spend a hundred dollars on a single barrel of Elijah Craig barrel proof, I'd rather just buy a Knob Creek 120 proof single barrel that I can try before I buy in our market. I know that might not be the case in everybody's market, but if you can try it before you buy it, some of the black cherry forward Knob Creek picks, I like those better than Elijah Craig Barrel yep. Proof. So it's a maybe for us. Now let's get into our absolutely wood rebuys. Let's These are products that have impressed us so much. We're willing to spend our hard earned money on another bottle. Yep. First thing is first, let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. Russell's store picks. Russell's reserve is a wild turkey product. We are well-documented wild turkey fans. Yes. And Josh is a well-documented store pick fan. Yes. yes. And so this is taking our wild turkey love and our single barrel store pick yep. love and combining them into one product. Honestly, rare breed goes toe to toe with this for us mm -hmm. and honestly trumps it a lot of the times, but this is like a fun variety item to have. Yeah. What's irritating me so much about this product right now is that it should be $65 and fairly readily available, but people are buying them and now flipping them for double on secondary. Uh, and if that's you, I kind of hate you a little bit, but you know, you do you boo. I just think that these should be available for everybody when stores get them in. Yeah. It's a great product. So for 65 bucks, even 70 bucks, we're buying every single barrel or store pick that we can find of Russell's reserve. And our last bottle for today that we're actually gonna spend our own money on surprisingly is going to be smoke wagon small batch and this yeah. one is as our video suggests completely empty we put yes. this in our recent blind flight night with our patrons as part of a lineup that included henry mckenna 10 year what else was in there 
I don't we know. had we had some other stuff, but Henry McKenna Ten Year and this were like the two allocated products. We had uh, Four Roses Single Barrel Select, and we had oh, I'm a blank on the oh regular old Knob Creek, and we had a Knob Creek or a New Riff Single Barrel Pick. Okay. So we had five different pours in this Blind Flight Night that we did with our patrons. This was the Landslide Victor. Vic yeah. Yeah. It's for whatever reason, whatever Aaron A. A. Ron at smoke wagon is doing with these small batch blends it's so well crafted it's mm -hmm. so balanced it's about 55 dollars. also the bottle can we talk about the bottle i was about to say it so okay. this is 55 dollars. i wish it were 45 or 50 bucks but i will pay a premium for this bottle yeah because when we pick this up to pour a glass of it look at this thing i mean there ha i know it's glass and it doesn't matter but there it it sparks joy in my heart when I look at this bottle and it's it it just makes me happy. Yeah. So and each batch differs obviously, but honestly, I think the small batch bottle looks better than the uncut unfiltered. And I actually if I had to pick one of the two to have, it would be the small batch because I think it's a better crafted, more balanced product. Mm -hmm. So between Russell's and this, boy, I'm a happy camper yep. if we can get our hands on either one of those. So there you go. That's our list of things we would buy or not buy again. Inspired by Car and Driver's long-term road test. When you spend a whole course of time with a bottle, I think it's so much more revealing mm -hmm. as to whether you would spend your money on it again or not. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to bring you guys. Every video, helpful, informative content, maybe entertaining. That's not our forte, but we try. Well, we just have fun. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's time to get into other yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's that time. So what we got? This one is going to be somewhat applicable to everyone and also maybe not applicable to you if you have really good vision, but I recently got a pair of prescription sunglasses. You did. And, and let okay. me say, you look fine in them. Okay, hang on. You're without contacts or glasses, blind as a bat. I'm very blind as a bat. Yeah, which explains a lot of what's happening here. <laughs> no. But I can see just fine without glasses, but I do have astigmatism. Uh -huh. so, so do I. So if I'm driving or if I'm looking at a computer screen or something like that, not that I wear sunglasses when I'm looking at a computer screen, I have always been interested in prescription sunglasses. I've never bought a pair. I've put it off and put it off and put it off. And well, finally- Because you don't need them. Right. But it does help, it helps reduce strain from your eyes. Right, and you always have contacts in, so I, you can just- I can just wear cheap sunglasses because I always wear right. contacts. You buy your home, you buy your sunglasses from Home Depot. I do buy my home, my, my sunglasses from Home Depot. And yeah. Maybe that can be another stuff next time. <laughs> yeah, cheap I'll sunglasses. Share, I'll share my sunglasses. Cue the ZZ tops. <laughs> but nonetheless, I have always uh, kind of not given my myself, my myself, what? I haven't given myself permission to spend on prescription sunglasses because they are pricey. But recently we were getting me new eyeglasses because mm -hmm. my prescription updated a little bit and we got some prescription sunglasses. Now, these aren't gonna be Ray-Bans or anything. I'm pretty sure this is just a local thing or maybe like a niche market thing. It's C Eyewear, S E E Eyewear. Mm -hmm. The brand isn't the other stuff here. It's the me giving you permission to go out and treat yourself. Treat okay. Yourself. Treat yourself to some prescription sunglasses. If you need them. If if you're like me and like you, you have contacts, so you can wear regular glasses. These for me, I drive a lot. Or if I'm or outside a lot. Or for a living, let's say. Yeah. And it's like, mm. they're like Wayfair, Ray-Ban Wayfair style, style, which is what I typically do wear. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a, we're inside in the dark and it's I feel like a complete douche for having these on right now. But these were a few hundred dollars mm -hmm. worth every penny. I drive a lot. They reduce my eye strain. They honestly wear cut off, but it just went off. Okay. This is, we need to plug in the Ninja recorder so we don't have the 30 minute time limit. Cause sometimes we get a little chatty Cathy. You just saw the bars. Cause I don't know where we ended, but we ran out of recording Our space. Our camera shut off. We only have 30 minutes, but nonetheless, this right here is a worthwhile buy. And it's something I've always wondered, like literally for years well, since I got glasses. you didn't know if it was gonna actually be a benefit to you or just be an expensive right. test. So I've always gone out and bought either cheap sunglasses mm -hmm. or maybe splurged a little bit and bought a pair of Ray-Bans or something like that because I was like, I don't really need glasses. I don't really need to spend a few hundred dollars. I'd rather just spend like 80 bucks or a hundred bucks or something. And now that I actually have them. How about you spend $6 at the Home Depot? <laughs> yeah. But now that I have a pair, I am so enjoying them. 
And so, yeah, just, just treat yourself. Like the, the less stress, the eye strain, and then the overall physical yeah, that's lowered worth it. stress mm -hmm. is well worth it. I honestly think they they might extend my lifespan. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Big claims. And speaking of big claims, last year we did a charity fundraiser mm -hmm. and we raised $15,000 for mental health. And if you want to be a part of that this year, it's something we do every year on the channel and we're pitching it early, we're pitching it often, and you're going to hear about it if you tune into this channel and you stick around to the end of the video. So check the video description below down there. You've got our email address and you can contact us and we can get in the conversation about what we're all about over here. And if you want to donate a bottle for a good cause, you can get be a part of what we're doing. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Till next week, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Fan. Fantastic. Fantastic. Choo -choo 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 -choo. What are you like a Power Ranger now? Mm. Are Power Rangers like the, don't they have rings or something? Okay. I never, I never watched a Power Ranger. I was salty on Power Rangers. Why? Because I grew up watching Voltron, and like Power Rangers felt like a ripoff. Oh, I didn't watch any of that. I watched like Rainbow Bright and Care Bears, so I wasn't watching any of the soup like the hero stuff. What? Don't well, you're a girl. You're a girl. I was a, like an eight-year-old girl. Yeah. I mean, you're not watching like the action and the fighting. No, and I, the... I, I did not watch like He-Man. I yeah. did watch She-Ra, Princess of Power, and there were a couple crossover episodes. <laughs> of course I, you. No, of I watched, course I watched, you watched I watched She-Ra. He-Man. What boy wouldn't watch She-Ra? Because the crossover. Princess of Power. Yeah. And now I'm married to a Princess of Power. <laughs>